Hey y'all, welcome to part two of my series on building my Gatton CNC router. In this installment, I'm going to discuss something that I haven't seen a lot of people address, and that is planning for a CNC, whether you're buying or building one. Now, obviously, because I'm building a Gatton CNC, I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about building one. So, uh, but hopefully you folks who are thinking about buying one will uh, get something out of this video series. Now, let me start by saying, um, just there's no other way of putting it, CNC is an expensive hobby. Uh, there is a price of admission and it's difficult to quote prices because they change constantly and any kind of price that I could give you right now may not be valid in heck in 15 minutes prices go up and down all the time uh, about the only thing I can say is um, do your due diligence do your shopping and but remember to stick with the specifications that Dave calls for in his plans now um, there are a lot of different sources for a lot of different parts and uh, supplies so that's one of the variables and one of the reasons why I can't get super heavy into pricing or what have you it is possible to build a Gatton CNC according to Dave's plans which is 48 by 48 table size not necessarily cutting size and I'll get into that a little bit later on um, it's possible to build one for anywhere from eleven $1 hundred to two thousand dollars. Now I know that's a wide range, and that doesn't really help you much as far as nailing it down. But it's because there are so many variables. I mean, um, it's just going to depend on how you accessorize and what uh, parts you go with. If you're uh, the kind of person who can source their own motors and get your own controllers and breakout board and wire everything up great your price is going to be different from a guy like me who is not um, electronically inclined I'm going to rely on the Xylotex drive box and motor kit so our prices are going to be different um, another variable is uh, what type of router are you going to use? I mean, do you already have the router that you plan on using for it, uh, as was the case with me? I used a router I already had. Uh, are you going to go with a water-cooled spindle? Are you going to add uh, limit switches and homing switches? All of these things add to the price, so it's very hard to nail it down. Um, as I said, CNC is a pretty expensive hobby so just know that it can nickel and dime you if you let it but there is a price of admission and you're gonna have to make the decision for yourself as to whether you think it's worth that price or not now over on my website marklindsaycnc.com I have a page titled the CNC process for the absolute beginner and on this page I detail the steps involved in using a CNC and some of the uh, parts, software, etc. that you're going to need to operate it. And using that as kind of a guide will kind of help you to figure out if this is something you even want to take on for yourself, monetarily speaking. So do your homework, shop around, find good sources for the correct components that Dave specs out here on the uh, in the builders plans that come with your Gatton CNC kit. And um, you know, just also remember that you're not writing a check for the full amount. That's the beauty of building it yourself. You can build it here and there as money and other resources become available. Um, you'll find that it is very enjoyable. Just the machine build in and of itself is a very enjoyable process. But it doesn't have to be a huge amount of money on the initial outlay. I mean, 
I tell people all the time, I forty dollared my build to death, and it took me a year to build me to build that uh, shoestring budget CNC, because as I got an extra forty bucks, I bought parts, I bought supplies, I bought equipment. Yeah, I had to save up and buy the uh, big ticket items, and I did luck into a few deals, but I didn't go out and just drop one big check. You know, I did it little by little, and you know it, that may work for you so um, I'm gonna stop harping on the financial just know that uh, there is uh, a, an initial cost involved and it will continue as you use it because you'll find something else that's bright shiny high speed low drag and you have to have and you will want to add it um, believe me <laughs> I'm here to shout so I'll get off the financial side and now let's uh, let's look at size considerations because that's another big question folks have now when it comes to the size of the CNC there's a f several things to consider one of them being the type of CNC you're going to build or buy now here I have a uh, picture an illustration of uh, just a generic CNC router doesn't even have a router or spindle mounted onto it but it's just kind of show you one of the types of CNC's that you will run into especially on the uh, imported models the um, 6030 etc um, and this type has the round linear rails with the bearings bearing surfaces inside and they work very well they are also you see them down here on the bottom they work real well they're pretty reliable but there is one fault with this type of design and that is the linear rails are within the gantry uprights so that creates uh, a limit as to your uh, capacity across the gantry here because if you were to move the Z plate here all the way over to this side once you bump into your limit switches over here or if you don't have limit switches once you get over here to your farthest extent just as close as you can here without actually hitting it that's still not your cutting width you'll need to add from this area here to the center of your Z plate where your router is mounted so whatever measurement if this is three inches for the sake of argument you you can only cut to within three inches of the side of the gantry so that removes a lot of your table space here and additionally and this is the case with all CNC routers the as the gantry moves back you have dead space underneath and behind the gantry now on this type it's less than it is on the other type that I'm about to show you but you still have that dead space under and behind the gantry that you cannot use when I say behind the gantry I mean behind the router's center line so there are benefits to this type of design but there are some distinct disadvantages when you figure that if the space from here to your center line is three inches that's six inches of capacity that you don't have just based on the design of the linear rails being in between the two gantry uprights so this type of CNC like my old sidewinder CNC here or the shoestring budget build if you will uh, if you'll notice the linear rails out here are applied to the front of the gantry rather than being captured in between the ga gantry uprights. So what this means is the Z plate here that controls the Z axis can move out this direction further. It's not limited to the space in between the two uprights. So if I take my controller here and I bring it down all the way out to the, as close to the edge as I can get here without actually going off or button the lead nut up against the inside of the upright, 
I can look down here and I can see that the center line of the router is right over the top of this barrel. So technically, if I set it up that way, I could cut into this aluminum angle. That's not a good thing. But it's just an example showing you the difference between the two types of CNC gantries. Now, if for some reason I needed to come out a little further, I could simply move this out of the way. I could simply cut longer rails and overhang them a little bit further. Now, there comes a point to where it's too much, obviously. I don't know why I'd want to cut out here. But theoretically, it's possible. Now, the way this was built, and it was built uh, according to the plans I got from Dave Gatton, um, the way it's built, these linear rails overhang the upright by about an inch and a half. So if I needed a little bit more capacity on, in this configuration, my y-axis, I could make these overhang by two inches or two and a half inches. See what I'm getting at? So it's more to do with the way the gantry is designed and built than it is with the overall width of the gantry. Another thing to take into consideration is the center line of your router versus the Z plate. Now in this instance my router, the center line of my router to the Z plate is approximately, and I can't get up there real close, approximately four inches from this edge of the Z plate. So when I move my Z plate out here all the way to the edge, this edge of the Z plate is flush. Actually, it's overhanging. It's past the end of my linear rail by about a sixteenth. I don't think that's an eighth of an inch. So my, as a result, my center line of my router is four inches to the inside. So that's something else to take into consideration when you're trying to determine the width of the gantry to build. Uh, now, this measurement from here to the center line is not necessarily equal to the center line to this side. So that's something else to take into consideration as well. But you see what I'm getting at when I say that there is really no cut and dried answer. If you build it X wide, you'll be able to cut to X width. You have to do a little bit of measuring on your own. You have to do a little bit of figuring on your own. Every router mounts a little bit different. And I have a Porter Cable Model 890 series motor in here. Uh, I don't remember if it's 891, 892, whatever. But it's the 890 series. And that has a three and a half inch body. If you're running a water-cooled spindle, it might be 80 millimeters. If you're running one of the other routers, it could be a two and a half inch diameter body. So what I'm getting at is the router mounts are going to be a little bit different. And they may be placed a little bit different. They may be, you know, off to one side or the other. So you'll have to figure out your configuration. Do some measuring, do some math for you to get the proper width of the gantry. Now, in the case of the Gatton CNC, Dave has designed it to where you have full control over that. On the old shoestring budget builds, the parts were cut out and I went precisely to his plans, as precisely as I could. But on the Gatton CNC build, how far you hang over these linear rails, over, over the uh, end of the uh, upright, is totally up to you. I believe Dave's overhang go run past the uprights by three inches. I'm going to run mine, I believe, right around four inches, but that may change. I mean, there's a certain point where I wouldn't want to go any further, but, you know, that's up to every individual. I can't see needing to cut past the lead screws. I don't know that you'd ever get to a situation where you really could, but I guess it's possible. So, but all of these things are uh, 
subjects to be taken into consideration when you're planning the width of the CNC. Now when it comes to planning the length of the CNC table, there are a few other things to take into consideration. One being the gantry length and the distance from the back of the gantry to the center line of your router bit. That's going to help determine how long your table needs to be. Now if you look at my CNC table here, you can see that I have a spoil board glued and screwed down. Well, now the, the screws are gone. I have a spoil board glued down, but it ends right here. That's because if I bring my gantry all the way back to where it's actually touching the motor mounts, right here, actually touching the motor mounts. Look at where the center line of my router is. It's just about a uh, half of an inch beyond the edge of my spoil board. All this is dead space. I can't use it. It's just there because it has to be there to hold the rest of the gantry. So there's that much space to take into consideration. Now I have the luxury of having a CNC here so that I can get kind of a rough guesstimate on how far that is and on mine it's roughly 14 inches. 14 and a half inches from the edge of the table to the front, to this edge of my spoil board is what I figured on. And I just did a rough guesstimate to figure on how far to set my spoil board. Then I came along and trimmed this flush at the max limit. Meaning what I did was I got the spoil board glued down, all set, ready to go. I brought this back to its max limit up against the motor mounts on both sides. Put in a straight bit, brought it over to this side plunged it down slowly and then trimmed the whole thing across. That did two things. It trimmed this up nice and even and I know it's running parallel to the y-axis of my gantry when my gantry is zeroed out against the motor mounts. I can then place a piece of material on the table and use a tri-square to square it up and I know that the front edge and this edge are square to the table. Now, I kind of digressed about uh, table sizes, but you see what I'm getting into here. If for the sake of argument you want to make your cutting capacity of your CNC 48 inches, in my case I would have to add 14 and a half inches to that. In fact what I would probably be more likely to do is add 15 inches to it just to err on the side of caution and give myself a little cushion because I don't want to end up running my gantry back against those motor mounts with any kind of force when it's running g-code so I want to have that cushion there and that's minimum you can go further now another thing to consider when you get down to this end is the length of your gantry my gantry length right here is 14 inches. So, and that's from the, this edge here to this edge here. The router sticks out just slightly from this edge. So when I run all the way down to this end, I need to know is my router going to be able to get the end of my spoil board before my gantry smacks these motor mounts. So again, we'll add a little bit to pad for that. I'm going to figure on making the linear rails about an inch longer this way than what I want to cut. If I want to cut 48 inches long, I'm going to add 15 inches up here for the dead space I can't cut. Then I'm going to add another inch down here as a, as a uh, safeguard against running this end of my gantry into my bearing mounts down here. 
So you see how this kind of comes into play. Now, if your, if your gantry down in this area here is more than 14 inches, obviously you're going to need to go further than that. If your router hangs out further than this, further than the uh, 14 and about a half inches I have from the back of my machine to here, then obviously you'll want to adjust that. But you see, when we get into all of these variables, you begin to see how difficult it is to tell you, make your table this size by this size. Well, it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> there are just too many variables to be able to give a cut and dried answer. I can tell you, anecdotally speaking, that my table, the entire table from end to end, is 48 inches long. I have a working cutting capacity on my spoil board of 32 and 3 quarters. That's about the biggest I feel comfortable cutting. And that's going all the way from this edge of the spoil board to this edge of the spoil board. Again, giving myself a little bit of extra space just as a cushion so I don't ram into the motor mounts or ram into the bearing mounts down here. Now when it comes to the stand, the stand is a different story entirely. Uh, my legs here at this end, which I don't think you can see, and my legs here at this end, which you might be able to see, are to the outside of the table. The table sits flush uh, on front and rear to the front edge of the table, but the stand legs are to the outside. And I have six legs here, so I have support in the center. This stand is fifty seven inches long. Then I have a little shelf mounted there where I've got my drive box and a couple of junky pieces. Um, breakout board cables, touch plate, all that just sitting right now for this moment. But you begin to see how things can grow. My cutting capacity here is 32 and 3 quarter inches. But I've got a piece, I've got a table set up that is a total of 63 inches to include that shelf where my electronics are sitting to get that 32. So, yeah, you need space. Now, if the CNC was oriented the other direction to where this was facing out of the away from the wall, I could get more width out of it. That's one of the reasons why I'm building a new CNC. So, I hope this was helpful to you and I hope you see what has to be considered before you can give any kind of a declarative statement on you need to build a machine with a table this size by this size in order to be able to cut that size. There's a lot of variables and you'll have to do some exploration and some math on your own. There are some things that we just can't tell you. So, I hope this was helpful to you. Okay, I hear you. You're standing up in front of your computer screaming at the screen, all right, we get it, now how big do I make my table? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I determined the size of my table. This, I'm here in SketchUp and I've drawn just a sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. This is standard 96 inches or 8 feet long by 48 inches or 4 feet wide. And I'm going to cut out my table out of this. Okay, I'm going to draw it out right now. So, first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to pull a center line to the width, whoops, I'm going to pull a center line to the width of my sheet of plywood. So I'm going to come up here and find the midpoint, and there we go. And I'm going to base the entire drawing off of this center line. Now, I know I want a cutting width of 48 inches, so I'm going to pull a line 24 this way, and I'm going to pull a line no, oh, come on, I'm going to pull a line 24 this way. All right, there's my cutting width. Okay? Now, I need to factor in 
my method of clamping material down in that cutting width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull another two inches to each side. Both sides. That gives me a two inch space here for clamps or to put some T-track or whatever other clamping method I'm going to use. Now I've got to figure out the I got to figure in the uh, space needed for the linear rails. Now in this build the linear rails are made of three quarter inch aluminum I'm gonna add a quarter inch so I'm gonna go ahead and pull one inch to each side outside of my two inch space here so let's get that done now what that gives me is my 48 inch cutting width plus two inches on each side for clamps t-track whatever I'm gonna use and then another inch for my linear rails. That gives me an overall width of 54 inches. So I need to, I know I'm going to need to cut a 54 inch wide table from this 48, from this 96 inch long piece of plywood. Now through the magic of SketchUp, that's real easy to do. I can just edit the component with my push pull. So I'll push on this edge, bring it up to that line, and push this edge over to this line, and I magically have a 54 inch by 48 inch tabletop. Now, because I'm working in a confined space, I can't build my CNC to cut a 48 inch long piece. I'm kind of stuck in that regard. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it the 48 inch width of a standard sheet of plywood. But I can still figure a few things out from here. First thing I'm going to figure is I'm going to take my inch of gap here or inch of space that I want to leave so I don't crash into my bearing mounts at this end. Then I want to come up to this end and I'm going to do my 15 inches that represents the dead space under and behind my gantry. So I can estimate from here that the space between here and here is going to be 32 inches. So I will have a cutting capacity of 48 by about 32. That's what I will feel comfortable cutting. And for my purposes, that suits me just fine. I can handle this. Now I'm going to get rid of these two guidelines here and show you something else. If this were a case where I needed 48 by 48, you'll notice I have two more sheets of plywood over here. What I would do if I had the space to build a 48 inch by 48 inch cutting capacity is I would do much the same thing with a couple of differences. Pull off my center line here, then pull another center line here so that I have the center of this sheet of plywood. I would then do much more or less the same thing. I would take my 24 inches here, plus my 2 inches here, plus my 1 inch here, then do the same on the other side. My 24 inches here, 2 inches here, one inch here. Now you notice I didn't go ahead and just add 24 to 2 to 1 and then enter 27 inches. I have to keep things straight in my head and that's one way of doing that. Now for this area I'm gonna bring in my one inch in the green direction. So now I have a total of 47 inches here. 
Now we're going to switch over to the second piece of plywood. And I'm going to make that component unique, which is something I should have done before. And I'm going to move this down in the green direction, i.e. join these two together. Okay. So from here, I want 48 inches. So I will 48, enter. So I have this line here. Now what I need to do is pull my 15 inches for clearance and dead space under the router. Now we've got a mess of lines here and it's time to start cleaning things up. Through the magic of SketchUp, I can edit this component and I can make this piece of plywood. We'll push pull this to the outside line here. Ba Boom. And this edge here as well. Ba Boom. Now I'm going to rip it to this width. That's done. Now I'll edit this component, push it up here. Come on, come on. And push this one here, close all of this. And now there's our table with a 48 inch wide by 48 inch long cutting area. That's how I figured out the sizes for my table. Yes, we have a joint here, but that joint is for the most part back in this area of dead space where it's not going to interfere with anything. So that's how I figured out my table size. Well, that's how I would figure out my table size if I had the space to uh, build a 48 by 48. But all things being equal, that's how I figured out my table size for my machine. And that's one option for you to figure out the table size for your machine. So, I hope this has helped you out. I know it was a lot of information in a very long video, and I apologize in advance for that. If you got anything at all out of this video, I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up down below, and leave me a comment if you have any questions. And if you want to follow along with the rest of my Gatton CNC build, in the next episode we're going to actually get to building something uh, but if you want to follow along consider subscribing to my channel but whether you subscribe to my channel or not I'd like to thank you very much for watching and y'all take care